Hey, I'm Eric with Mountain State. And I'm Rachel, and come with us as we build our 2021 Toyota Tundra. Last year, the 2018 Tacoma that we built with MSO got totaled, and after several months of going back and forth with the insurance company, we ultimately decided to buy a new vehicle. We ended up deciding to go with the Tundra for a number of reasons. We wanted a little bit more space. Um, we really liked the simplicity of the second gen. Uh, we also really wanted to stay with a V8 engine. And I think just for our preferred setup, that was really what we were looking for. The Tundra also has a little bit more payload than the Tacomas. So that means that we could have a little bit more breathing room when planning out this build. So we also really loved this truck because it came with a 38 gallon gas tank, which was a huge plus because we had always talked about getting that for the Tacoma and this truck already came with it. We also really liked that it had leather seats. It's a nice upgrade. <laughs> so we went back and forth a lot on whether we wanted a second gen or a third gen Tundra. And it really came down to two major factors for us. One was the price and two was the fact that we really wanted the reliability of the V8 engine. A big part of this build series is that Rachel wants to learn. This is just gonna give me a lot more confidence. I have not felt very confident when we've gone out on trips before, in part because I just don't have the knowledge and I don't necessarily have the skills. I think it's really fun and camping's super fun and the community is great. I really want to make sure that if something goes wrong on the road, I have the confidence and the skill set to be able to at least contribute, if not fix it. And this is also going to be a really fun project for the two of us since the last build you did primarily on your own. So now it feels like an us build. Now we've got a bunch of parts on the way, um, but we need to get the Tundra ready for its first guided trip here at the end of March. So we have the electrical panel, which we're going to do today. We have the snorkel, we have the diff breather, we have the rear seat delete. Mm -hmm. So the first couple episodes of our build series are gonna be on these smaller items. Mm -hmm. um, once we get the suspension and the wheels and tires and all the armor and then the camper gets installed, then we can really dive into all those bigger systems. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, our focus is just on getting this thing trail ready and guided mm -hmm. trip ready mm -hmm. for the time being. And pup ready. And pup ready, yes. <laughs> so first thing we're going to do is all the electrical prep to make sure that the rest of the installs are a lot easier. Today, the plan is to try and do the underhood electrical panel. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail about what's involved with that and the Midland 575 radio installed. All right. You're not supposed to do that. This is a mount similar to a power tray, but from SDMT. It's got this Safety Hub 150. This is gonna make it really easy to hook up uh, things like the compressor or anything that's gonna be a little bit higher load. It also does have regular uh, ATO fuse slots. So we're actually gonna be wiring the radio into one of these as opposed to hooking it into the Switch Pros. Um, that said, we do have a Switch Pros. I've already pre-wired this, um, cut off a bunch of the extra wires here. So as we add accessories, the positive leads will go into here and the negative leads will go into this negative bus bar here. 120 amp breaker, this goes directly to the battery. So the positive lead to the battery will go in here. The power will flow into the safety hub 150, the ground back to the battery here. So there will be actually two separate circuits. One that is powering the safety hub and all the kind of like accessories that we'll want to wire into the battery. And then we'll have the switch pros here, but I got a lot of work to do, so let's do it. So why did we choose the switch pros or why did you choose the switch pros? And what are all the accessories that we're gonna install? Maybe. Part of the reason why we went with the Switch Pros is because it has actual physical buttons. Didn't want to just rely on our phones or just rely on a touch screen to turn on and off these switches, especially mm -hmm. like if we need to keep our eyes on the road, I want to be able to feel and turn on which switch mm -hmm. um, I need to at mm -hmm. that given moment. So we're going to be able to use an app for all of that. The compressor is going to run off of this. Um, we will probably have a couple light bars. We may mm. or may not have some ditch lights. There's a lot of like foundational pieces in this kit that are going to make it very simple for us to add those accessories on later. Mm. This is going to be super important. All right. So the first thing I did was remove the battery. The electrical panel is going to sit right here. 
basically right on top of the fuse box. There's one leg that attaches to that attachment point right there on the existing fuse. And then there's another attachment back behind, I don't know if you can see it, but back behind the fuse box where this one's going to go. And I do need to modify the bracket for, for that little electrical junction box. You can kind of see it back there. Um, the truck is jacked up on the floor jack because I dropped a 10 millimeter wrench <laughs> somewhere and we can't find it. Even though we've spent like an hour looking for it. Yeah, I mean, it's not a driveway DIY if you don't drop a wrench, I guess. Yeah. Um, so you can see that we got the brackets installed here for the uh, power panel. Right now, what I'm doing is trying to decide which fuses I'm gonna tap into. The blue one goes to ignition, so I need to find an ignition source fuse, and then the white one goes to the lights. I feel like we need an explain it to me like M5 section. Yeah, I need one of those too. <laughs> All right, I gotta find a different fuse that has these kinds of prongs like this. So I had to go get one. In this case, it's a 15. We're gonna plug this into the low lights for the headlight on the right hand side. That's gonna tell the Switch Pro to dim when uh, the lights are on. So the first trip to the auto parts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good one. In terms of tips and tricks for the wiring portion mm -hmm. of this build, we want to make sure that all of the wiring is protected from the elements. Mm -hmm. So we don't want any exposed metal. We want to make mm -hmm. sure that we're using heat shrink properly, that we are using wire sheathing mm -hmm. properly so that as we're going down those dirt roads and everything's like vibrating, mm -hmm. um, the wires aren't like chafing on, a, on mm -hmm. metal or aluminum or anything hot. We drilled a small 5 16th hole in the top of the fuse box and we put a little grommet in there. So we're gonna feed those blue and white wires out through this. Um, mm -hmm. Should make a pretty good seal. It's a pretty small hole. Um, and then we're going to put some spade connectors on the other end so that we can uh, disconnect and connect the electrical panel uh, in case we need to remove mm -hmm. it. This is the first time I have been out here to see you drill through the truck. It's called a center punch. It makes a hole. Ooh. We want to paint that so that it doesn't mm. rust. Ah, I think so. So that's what we're working with now. That one's in there, get that started. Okay. It's a telescoping pen, but it's got a magnet on the end. So it's perfect uh -huh. for this scenario where I <laughs> dropped freaking washer and got it. Right okay, here. that's probably the most useful tool I've seen yet. It's a little tiny washer. It's so wow. Okay. I'm I'm just excited to just spend more time with you, but also just to spend more time with the truck, getting to learn it and knowing what tools to use to fix certain things, and also understanding like different components of the truck and the things that we're installing and why we're installing it and how things go together. Like, there's just a lot of knowledge that I need to gain. Part of tools and like working on stuff is always putting things back where they belong. Update on where we're at. We just added spade connectors to the ignition and the lights trigger. We cut down the Switch Pro's side, so these will plug in together. First, we need to heat shrink these. So mm -hmm. see how this is like, like big? Mm -hmm. There's um, space. Yeah. yeah, there's space. So we'll heat shrink them so that they go around these, and then we'll heat shrink over once we connect them. Okay. Okay, so our triggers are hooked up for our Switch Pros. Um, now what we need to do is install the battery and then hook up all the cables. Um, I also need to coil this pink wire, which is an auxiliary trigger. Our electrical panel is pretty much installed. We have all the power running through both this circuit as well as running straight to the, to the Switch Pros. Um, I haven't connected to any of the negative wires yet, but the positive is all set. What you doing over here? Um, we are modifying the power cable for the MXT 575. We used to have the MXT 400, mm -hmm. which was 40 watts, which at the time was the most um, output wattage. Yeah, Midland's been really 
uh, great to us, great mm -hmm. to Mountain State. We've worked with them for many, many years. And we also use the radios a lot on our guided trips. Yeah. Um, we, we talk a lot more than I think people expect on the radio because mm -hmm. that's part of the fun, right? Mm -hmm. It's like going on this trip with a bunch of strangers, getting yeah. to know each other through the radio, such mm -hmm. like, so much so that like Paul and Bethany literally started a company <laughs> to help facilitate that. Yeah. Right? Like that's how big of a part the radios play on our trips in mm -hmm. forming the connections and forming the relationships. It's one of the best parts about MSO trips. It's been such a great way to get to know people uh, when we're not just surrounded or surrounding the campfire at night. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> We're going to install the radio unit underneath the seat mm -hmm. and the wiring is going to go through the dash or through the firewall across under the center console here. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is take the center console out. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this, put my trim tool under this and under here and then pop this out. So there's just a series of clips. We won't break it Ooh. Um, and that just comes out just like that. What you doing down there? I am <laughs> going to poke a hole in this rubber gasket. Uh, so we just used a trim tool to open that up. Made it tuck, tuck in through here. Just come in over here like that. Perfect. This is pretty sweet. But look at that. Switches are hooked up. Oh, and it dims. Nice. We punched two new holes in the firewall, which was very exciting. WD-40 and a... Uh, Electrical um, tape yeah. and a clothes hanger. <laughs> and a clothes hanger. Works great. <laughs> For the radio, this is going to get wired into the Safety Hub 150 here. Um, not into one of these terminals, but into a terminal on the other side. And then the negative is going to go to this bus bar. We hook this up. And then we plug this in. <laughs> We've got power. Woohoo! Yeah. We started around 11, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, we got the electrical panel installed today, which was a huge, huge job, and all that stuff wired into the relevant fuses. It was very and tedious. Fuses. Yeah, very tedious. Learned a little bit of electrical work. Yep. Um, learned how to use rev nuts. <laughs> yeah. What else? Cut, strip, and crimp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's my takeaway for today. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but it was also really fun just seeing how we put like the electrical or the wiring harnesses through the firewall. That was really interesting um, just seeing how that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and also just seeing how creative you are in terms of like hiding the some of the wires uh, to get the Behind switches. The yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really cool. So, yeah. Well, um, I think that wraps up the first install day, really. Yeah. We didn't really get as much accomplished as we wanted to. Um, I need to order some parts for the radio. Mm -hmm. And um, next week, maybe we'll tackle the snorkel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Cool. See y'all later. <laughs> la, 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 get la, the la, sparkle. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> <laughs> toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. <laughs> <laughs> the tip of the tongue, the teeth, and the lips. <laughs> That's cool, <of> rock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>